blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, come on and sing this song with me on this morning. Sing it, church. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. This power in the blood, this power in the blood of Jesus. This power in the blood of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Oh, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, your triumphal, your triumphant entry into Jerusalem as we celebrate this Holy Week, representing, signifying the week that you died and rose again. Minister to your people this week. Help us to take a hold. Help us to understand what it all means that you died on Calvary Cross to redeem us from our sin, to redeem us from the curse of the law. Bless your people on this morning. Strengthen your people. Encourage them. Let the word of God come alive to them as we celebrate one of the greatest victories to have ever been won in the history of mankind the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all grateful this morning because of what you accomplished on the cross of Calvary. We are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Help us to never lose sight of what you did on Calvary Cross. We are forever grateful, Lord. We are forever grateful. Thank you. Have your way this morning. Not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Oh, glory to God. Happy Palm Sunday to all of you. We know today marks the day as we celebrate it when Jesus made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. We're going to look at some of that on this morning. And we know on Friday... We will celebrate Good Friday and then Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Oh, glory to God. Put your heads together and let's give, just give God praise for this week. My God, the greatest week in the history of the world. <laughs> praise be to God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad that my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory to God. So we are continuing in our series, How to Win When It Looks Impossible. And on this morning, we are looking at God cannot lie. Let me say this to you. When you see God make a declaration of something that he has set out to accomplish, there is no amount of manpower, devil, or demons that can stop the word of God from coming to pass. Isaiah said, Isaiah said, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It 
will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing I sent it to prosper in. I'm telling you, you can stake your life on the Word of God. God cannot lie. Right, so on this morning, we are talking about God cannot lie. The first scripture I want to take you to is the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, and you'll see the significance of what we're talking about on this day that represents Palm Sunday. Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, from the New Living Translation. Zechariah prophesies under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Rejoice! O people of Zion, shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. My God, my God, my God. It is amazes me when you begin to study the Word of God how accurate the Holy Spirit prophesies about the future of the coming Messiah. And the Holy Ghost prophesied these things through his prophets hundreds and even thousands of years before it come to pass so that when it does come to pass, we would not have a shadow of a doubt that this is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. He is the king of the Jews. He is the savior of the world. He is the lamb of God. Without a shadow of a doubt, the Holy Ghost gave those details hundreds and thousands of years in advance. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost got to be God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Only God can say what's going to happen in the future and give clear and specific details. I mean, right to the T. Only God knows it all. And I think sometimes we, we are guilty of giving the devil too much credit. The devil does not know all things. Had he known all things, he would have never crucified Jesus. That's proof the devil don't know everything. Are you listening to me? Because had he known that crucifying Jesus would bring about his greatest defeat, he would have never crucified him. That's proof in itself. Satan does not know everything. We give him too much credit. Only God knows all things. He is God, and beside him there is no other. Now, look, look at the details that God is giving to the people of Israel, the people of of Jerusalem, the people of the world, to let everyone know when you see this day fulfilled. Notice what he says, verse 9 of Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, my God, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble. Riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Now watch the fulfillment of this in Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. The Bible says, as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Notice this, and I tell you what, when you when you begin to see this, the Word of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit unfold, you'll begin to understand that the gifts of the Spirit of God serves one purpose. It's to point people to the Lord Jesus Christ, to point people and let this, this dying sinful world know that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I dare someone to type below this video right now, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. If you get your eyes of Jesus, you're headed for trouble. Now watch this. Look at what Jesus tells them, and he is this is called the gift of the word of knowledge. That Jesus is revealing to them exactly things that are current, things that are present, where certain things are situated, where they are located, giving them detailed information, giving them the address, I mean right down to the wire. Watch this, y'all. He said, go into the village over there. He said, 
as soon as you enter it, <laughs> you will see a donkey tied there with its coat beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. Dear God, dear God. Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, knew it was time to fulfill the prophecy that Zechariah had seen over several hundred years before the coming of the Messiah. How on God's, I'm telling you, when I study the Bible and I see things like this, I get excited. That means God's got a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life, and there ain't no devil in hell can stop the plan of God from being fulfilled. Are you listening to me? I mean, Zechariah saw this moment in Jesus' life. How did he see this moment in the life of Christ? It only could be by the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But, Saka, Alabasaya, but God has revealed them unto us, to us by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, he is a secret revealer. The Holy Ghost is always pointing time, man, to the Lord Jesus Christ. When, when the gifts operate, it's not to make some man look like there's some big sort or to bring glory to some ministry. When the Holy Ghost manifests the gifts, it's to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Jesus said, when he, the Holy Ghost, comes, he will glorify me. He will magnify me. He will bring honor to me. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Ghost gives Christ the word to speak to the disciples, to show him exactly where the donkeys are. These were the donkeys that Zechariah saw hundreds, thousands of years before it even came to pass. Zechariah was looking through the eyes of the Holy Ghost, and he saw this day, he saw this day, Palm Sunday, the day when Jesus would make his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Watch this. Jesus said, if anyone asks you what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. Verse 4, this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, and this is Matthew, a disciple of Christ. Matthew is about to point out to us, I mean, the, the scriptures is interpreted in scriptures. Matthew is, a point, is about to point out to us that this fulfillment, this happening here with the donkey is the fulfillment of Zechariah's prophecy that I read to you in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Matthew said this took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is, he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw the garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Their God, Zechariah, saw this moment. Zechariah told them about this exact day that was coming so that when it come to pass, man, women, boys, and nobody would have excuse. Everyone would be without excuse because it was, it was foretold them that when you see this happen, this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. He is the King of the Jews. He is the Savior of the world. So there would be no doubt as to who Jesus was and is. The Bible says, verse 8, most of the crowd, they spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Another gospel said it was palm, it was palm tree branches that they cut and spread it on the road. Listen to this. Why was the crowd doing this? The crowd was doing this because they had seen the miracles. They had seen the signs. They had seen the wonders. They had heard him declare the word of God with such clarity as had, as had never been heard on the face of this earth. He began to explain things to them out of the Bible and make sense to them out of the Word of God. And they knew this only could be the Messiah. This is what Zechariah saw. And the crowd is responding exactly as Zechariah described them. The Bible says, 
most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession. I mean, they went wild praising God. They knew what this meant. And the people all around him were shouting. Glory to God. Zechariah said, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. And he was in Jerusalem. Dear God, dear God. Jesus was in the center of the procession. Matthew 21, 9. And all the and, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he ended. Who is this? They asked. The crowds replied, it's Jesus. It's Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth in Galilee. Who is it? He is the son of God. Who is it? He is Mary's baby. He is the lamb of God. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my savior. He is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Oh, glory to God. He is a soul coming king. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is he who was dead and he is alive forevermore. He has the keys of David, of death and of hell. Doors he open, no man can shut. And doors he shut, no man can open. I am telling you, he is the king of the Jews. He is the Messiah. He is the savior of the world. He is the son of God. Zechariah's prophecy was fulfilled that day. Zechariah saw it. My God, Zechariah died hundreds of years before this word even came to pass. But that's how you know it's the word of God and not the word of a man. The man is in the grave. He's already dead and gone. But the word of God will stand forever. God cannot lie. If God said it, you can take it to the bank. You can stake your life. Hey, glory to God. I said you can stake your life on what thus said the Lord. Help me preach five minutes here. God is not a man, my God, that he should lie, nor the son of a man, that he should have to repent. If God said it, he'll make it good. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Somebody shout, I take my stand on the word of God. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not, cannot, and will not prevail against it. Shout and help me give him praise. Help me give God praise. Hallelujah. Give up a shut up. Glory to God. I'm going to see a victory. I feel the Holy Ghost here. A victory. Come on. Because I'm going to see a victory for the battle. Belongs to you, Lord, and I'm gonna see a victory. Glory to God for the battle. The weapon may be formed. Sing it with me, church. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Listen, and when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve, because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Sing it with me, church. And my God will never fail. Sing it, because I'm going to see a victory <laughs> for the battle, for the battle. Come on, because I'm going to see. Let me say this to somebody too. And then. God cannot lie. If God shed it, you can stake your life on it. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the living God. You can stake your life on the fact that God cannot lie. If it's written, it's real. You can stand on it 
you can take it to the bank. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to give you an opportunity on this morning to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, you can give through the ministry app. If you have downloaded the ministry app, if you haven't, you should. <laughs> Just visit us online, seanpinder.net forward slash app, and you can download the ministry app. Listen to me good. You can just show your support for the preaching of the gospel. He died and he rose again. That's what this is about. To give, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726 McKinney, Texas 75070. Never forget, me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we appreciate you. We don't take you for granted. We look forward to seeing you on tomorrow as we continue the series, How to Win When It Looks Impossible. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.